podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Raj Shulka. Raj is the VP of AI and Machine Learning at Symphony AI. Raj, welcome to the show. Thank you, JP. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're super excited to have you. So we've got a lot to cover, but let's start with yourself, please. Can you give the audience a little bit of background of yourself, your journey through AI from where you got started to what's led you to where you are today? I uh, lead the AI and machine learning efforts here at Symphony AI, and I also head what we call the incubations effort, and I'll go into that some of that later. But, you know, I came from Microsoft and I, where I had spent a long time, I spent 13 years or so at Microsoft, where I was an engineering leader across different divisions over time. I think with a company like Microsoft, it's almost like working at many companies and you get to do many things. Before I came here, I was the head of AI and machine learning at Business Applications Group in Azure which means all of the applications as a dynamics portfolio and power platform, power BI, power automate kind of a group of offerings. And so that my team used to build the AI models and the decision-making engines that go behind it that customers use. Uh, My journey, you know, I kind of happened to be in the AI and machine learning area. It's before the term data science or data scientists were coined, I did my master's from UT Austin, and I just happened to do my thesis in network analysis or network data analysis. And we used to use all kind of machine learning algorithms back then to see if we are seeing a network anomaly or not. So it was a cool space. You could see kind of it's growing and it was good to be there. But I graduated and then I just started working in the search and advertising space. And this is pre data science era, pre-cloud era, but the, by the nature of being in search and advertising, I was exposed to both machine learning as core, core components and how online services and pre-cloud days, what was emerging as cloud technologies and running things on the servers, managed and so on, were coming together. So yeah, I spent about five years in uh, Bing, Microsoft Bing and ads. Then I moved over to run some enterprise predictions, which initially uh, we did as a services, sort of a high touch component. And then later on, I moved on to run that as a platform in Azure, which thousands of companies and millions of daily users. And so at scale, machine learning models and the platforms, AI platforms that we used to run them. So that was my journey before that. And from that, I moved on to Symphony AI and it was exciting for me because I wanted to move from a kind of a mix of platform and AI to a pure AI play. And so here at Symphony AI, it's a pure AI applications driving business transformations, which puts my role and kind of what we do here front and center of our future as a company. Amazing. Thank you so much for the background and the level of detail you've gone into about your background in Microsoft really speaks to how you've been able to secure such a high profile role in Symphony AI. Um, Many people listening will be familiar with Symphony AI, but for those who are not, can you give us a high level overview who Symphony AI are as a business, what impact you're having in the AI space and talk about the various companies and industries that you support? So Symphony AI is one of the leading AI SaaS companies out there. It's it's it came together as, you know, a few different verticals, what we call verticals, but what a few different companies which were operating in in some special industry sectors. So Symphony AI today operate as as I said, SaaS AI company, we build AI applications for retail and CPG, for financial services, for industrial and manufacturing, media groups, and IT services. So these are kind of our main verticals. And then we have public sector vertical as well, where we work with the government and uh, defense and these kinds of sectors as well. So 
I think the very interesting thing is if you go back to what I was saying in my previous role at Microsoft, I used to work at a Azure platform level and AI applications there, and there we used to build applications of what I would call horizontal AI, meaning every company has a sales group, a marketing group, a customer service group, and you can afford to build platforms which will look similar and applications which would look similar across companies. And that has its advantages in terms of scale and whatnot, but it is a little restrictive because you don't necessarily know what the company does. And that's why you see these cloud providers growing into what's not now called uh, cloud for this vertical. So like there is a Azure for retail or there is a Google cloud for healthcare and things like that. I think at Symphony AI, that core of vertical or domain knowledge is quite central. And if you think of the mission, we are here to solve real business problem for these businesses and drive real customer value for them and business value for them. So if you look at those metrics or key KPIs, in order to drive them through AI and machine learning models, you have to understand what they mean and what the domain is, how the processes come together, how the processes are dependent on each other. So as you work in retail, for example, and within retail, as you work on grocery stores or grocery retailers, for example, as you go more domain specific, your AI applications can be closer to the eventual business KPIs, I think by definition. And that helps these ML models be able to drive real business value a, a lot closer. So I think at Symphony AI, our goal is to be verticalized AI company, going very vertical, very domain specific in these areas I said, which helps us build models they are not domain agnostic. They're opposite of it. They're very domain specific. They know what the data means. They know what the data relationship means. They know what the predictions would mean and when the predictions would go wrong. So it's not a sort of high level classification accuracy or error. It will go into saying when you make this error, you are going to have these many stockouts, which will lose to this much loss in terms of business. And so that angle of domain specificity and being vertical puts us in a, as AI and machine learning practitioners in a very cool and interesting spot because, you know, you feel responsible for eventually things going wrong or right. And it's a very cool, interesting place to be in. Certainly. And for again, for anyone listening who's not familiar with Symphony AI's success, the business launched in 2017 and you're already up to over 2,000 employees working with some of the biggest brands across all industries. So you guys mm -hmm. are a true innovator and leader in this field. Raj, talk to us a, a bit more then about your role. Look, the VP of AI and machine learning at a company the size of Symphony is a big title with a lot of undertaking. What yeah. is the primary objective of your role? What would success look like? And then walk us through how you will work with the core data science and ML engineering teams and the customers. So my role is, I think it has two main facets uh, of it, right? or like two main things that I, I'm driving. One is the AI and machine learning roadmap in terms of what models we use, how they run, what is the platform that supports running them, both all the way from how the data flows in, how it's transformed, how the models are trained, how the models are hosted, and is it really solving the business problems? Are we using the latest and greatest models out there from a strategy point and from an execution standpoint to drive that across the company and to bring a sort of common workflows that all the verticals that we have can use? Now, the models themselves are very specific to the verticals, but there are common frameworks that they can use. So every forecasting problem, for example, has a have some common elements and then some domain specific elements. And how do these come together to really run as an end to end platform in a robust manner with proper data governance, security, privacy and things like that? So my first part of my role is to make sure that there is a platform we have internally, which we call the Eureka platform, which my team owns, which is where we use that as a driver of our AI ML strategy across the company. 
that's my first role. My second role that I spoke about briefly earlier is the head of incubations here, where I then or my team then tries to use the Eureka platform we have to spin off new applications in these verticals relatively quickly. As you can imagine, we've grown very fast and both in terms of businesses and in, the, in terms of the number of people in the company as well, which is exciting. But at the same time, in every vertical and area, we see opportunities that present themselves in the market, right? Like COVID period was a prime examples of how things change drastically, like consumer demand change, where people sit and work from change. And there was an opportunity to cash in on, like, can we build a new application that gives insights around how consumer demand is changing, for example? And if you imagine, you know, being a startup that we pride ourselves in, we should be able to come up with new applications relatively quickly. So that's what we call incubations. And in every vertical we have, whether it's in retail, CPG, or manufacturing, or media, or ID services, we want to be at the forefront of what our customers need and be able to build these AI applications very quickly. And so my team's goal right now on the product side, we know that there is a lot of interesting applications. On the execution side, my team is trying to make sure we can churn out one new application a quarter, for example, that is very focused on what our customers need right now. Like right now, for example, inflation is a big topic. And maybe inflation insights, and I'm talking hypothetical because I can't go into the details of some of the new applications we'll be building, but just as an idea, right? Like for all the retail companies out there, how is inflation driving customer demand? Can I plug this in as a as an insight quickly and how to churn that or how to take that use case and have a new application that derives insights and end-to-end -end recommendations would be the other part of my job. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. Obviously, with the role you've taken on, you've inherited a large organization of data scientists and data engineers. Mm -hmm. Very different in terms of the team that you would have had at Microsoft, but nonetheless, very impactful. Would you give the audience an overview of just how many people are involved, how many people are on the data science and ML team, what the culture is like, what it's like day to day, sort of a look behind the scenes for people who are potentially interested in joining Symphony AI in the future? So we have, as we said, we have verticals where we go deep into in as expertise. Retail is by far our biggest vertical and, you know, there'd be engineering and product teams and sales and customer support kind of teams. So each vertical has those kinds of teams. And then within the core engineering teams, there'll be uh, data science teams, and those are typically smaller, as all listeners are probably aware of. And then there are some data engineering teams and whatnot. So in my group, we are the core platform team is about 40 to 50 guys who are working on uh, building the Eureka platform and, you know, all capabilities around it that serve all our verticals. And we don't want a reporting structure where all data engineers across the company report to us. We'd rather see them as internal customers. And we have a very flexible sort of a working culture where if we are working on a capability that one of our verticals needs, we spin off like a, a concept of a squad, right? Like three people from our team, two people from the vertical team, bringing together, adding something, trying something. And then if it works, we, we add it as a capability on a platform. So that's kind of operationally how we work on. Then I think the data scientist group is a group within that. And then we have sort of a very closely knit data science community here. And I'm working with some of the other data science leaders here to drive the roadmap on that and share the common problems and how we can solve it through the most modern AI ML techniques and how we can solve them practically through the platform. And so there'll be, I think they're close to 
I would say 50 or 60 data scientists who work in this group, which I lead and oversee and, and not everyone reports to me, but I think we kind of form this center of excellence, if you will, for the AI and data science community here, which where everyone participates, looks at the common problems that we have, how to solve it in the same way, trends around AI and ML that are out there, how can we quickly grab them, try them on our experiments and benchmarks that we have, roll out the improvements via the platform quickly. Thank you for that, Raj. Obviously, you've been with Symphony now for a few months and still getting to grip with the responsibilities of your role, but already you've got a view of what's important for the customers and Symphony to stay on top of the ever-changing world within AI. I know it's something that we were talking about off air. Can you speak to where your view is on the importance of AI within various enterprises and what companies need to do to stay on top of the ever-changing landscape? And then on um, part two of that, is how Symphony can help them do so. I think as all the listeners are probably aware, this is one of the fastest changing areas we are in in the tech industry, right? AI and ML innovations are happening at, at a very rapid pace. And being coming from Microsoft, I had the first hand view of how they are happening. And so I think some of the top tech companies, big tech, as we say it, has a lot of the data and a lot of the tools that are needed to drive modern large models, as you would say. I think uh, the trend is moving from custom applications for every problem into encapsulating how the world behaves as world knowledge, if you will, or as through systems of intelligence that know how the world behaves. Think of large language models, things of large image and vision models. And I think the good thing that is happening is there are some companies out there which are driving, bringing this outside of big tech to be available as open source and to many other companies out there. But there is still a gap in terms of what happens in the consumer world or like how models like GPT-3 or DALI in this case are driving innovation in the consumer world or B2C space, there is still a lag in which how these things come over to the B2B space. And it's kind of by design, right? Like the data governance, data privacy rules are more strict. Businesses tend to be careful before adopting new technologies and things like that. But at the same time, there is a great appetite to bring in these latest advancements quickly into business processes. And that's where I think Symphony AI or my role here is trying to drive, like in all the applications do, I'll take a quick example, for example, right? Imagine uh, the modern large-scale image or vision models and imagine an application like industrial and manufacturing where we are working with machines and parts and we want to say very quickly, looking at how a machine is doing or with some IoT devices around, along with an image of it, whether it's starting to malfunction or not. So in the earlier days, you would start gathering a lot of data and go through the whole process. I think these days you already know what parts look like or what machines look like. You can, with very few examples in sort of an example-based learning framework, build a model that says whether this part is good or not, or whether it's starting to malfunction or not. And so there is an element of world knowledge that is being derived through an existing large vision model or large image model that was generated out of millions and billions of images out there, fine-tuning it to this application, and then really saying the user at the end of it or the data admin on the industrial side very carefully labels only a few examples. And that's all that is needed to produce a really customized model for that application. And so, if you imagine this from an end to end, a role of Symphony AI to bring the latest and greatest in machine learning models that is out there to a very specialized industry applications and filling this gap in a matter of weeks and months is what we want to be really good at. And ultimately we want to drive business value and solve real use cases. But I'm increasingly seeing that being able to bridge this gap in where the consumer AI space operates and where the enterprise AI space operates and being able to do it quickly is very important. And I think Symphony AI is positioned to do that very well. And that's something I would say for people interested in joining us that we are in this 
very exciting journey and you can play a big part of that. That leads me perfectly to my final question, which is about the message for people listening who are potentially interested in the work and environment at Symphony. Obviously, your role is strategic in many aspects, one of which is to continue to grow and develop the team there. Speaking to an audience of potential future employees, what is it that you would tell them about the environment of work at Symphony that would get them excited enough to join Symphony over some of the other great opportunities available to them? You would get to work on an array of technologies. You would get to work end-to-end. We like to have individual ownership. We like to put our data scientists in front of our customers. We like to put our product managers exposed to technology, driving technologies, and not just exposed to customers. You get to do a lot of things end-to-end, and you are owners of many applications. Our goal is to churn out new AI applications very quickly, and so a lot of people get involved in, at the same time, at a high quality. So fast-paced environment, but somewhere where you'll get end-to-end ownership. And sometimes, basically, we try to achieve that through very clear ownership. And there's no management layers and things like that. Drive work through squads, small groups working together, feeling like they are end-to-end owners. So in some sense, there are many small startups within the startup that go and go grab the market opportunity out there, fail quickly, move on, learn from it. And I think that's what you would excite someone joining our team. Raj, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us. Your career and background in A is obviously stellar from your time at Microsoft and you've now moved to another top tier organization. It was great to learn about Symphony's approach to verticals and its focus on specialization, but also how you're planning to help enterprises stay on top of the ever-changing landscape. And obviously, uh, given the success of the company, it's a great place to work and and the growth is only going to continue. So yeah, we wish you, the team and everyone at Symphony AI the best of luck in months and years to come. And we're excited to, to have you back on the show in the near future to hear how things have gone. Thank you so much. Thank you, JP. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.